This is the Gregorian calendar. Made by the Pope in 1582, it's what you're already used to. It's always got 365 days, except almost every four years when it gets a bonus. That occasional addition, today if you're watching right away, is used because Gregory's calendar is solar, meaning it tries to make one year exactly one revolution around the sun. This makes sure that December is always cold, barring uh, outside influences. Without this leap day, the seasons would slowly slip out of place, but it's tricky to handle. The speed the Earth spins doesn't divide nicely with the speed it revolves around the sun. This leaves us with a little less than six hours extra each year. Our calendar adds one day, but surely there's gotta be other options on how to handle this correction. There are three main types of calendars. You already know how solars deal with the problem, so let's start with the lunars. The Hidri is the one you're most likely to run into. It was made by Caliph Umar I. So put yourself in his shoes. The year is 622 and you're making a calendar using the moon. How do you make it stick to the seasons? That's the neat thing. You don't. This quirk of lunar calendars is why Ramadan is starting in a couple of weeks, even though it was in May just a few years ago. The Hijri calendar slides back about 11 days per year when compared to the Gregorian calendar. Since the rule of Ramadan is to fast during the daylight, Muslims in the Northern Hemisphere can look forward to some easier years coming up. Unlike the Gregorian, the months in the Hijri start in correspondence with a particular phase of the moon. But just like the Earth's orbit doesn't divide down into days, neither does the moons. So even purely lunar calendars still need to insert leap days, they just do it to keep the months on track with the moon, not the seasons. But you know what's better than the occasional leap day we see in both of these? How about a leap month? That's right, Luna's solar calendars are an amazing mashup of the two, keeping their months in line with the moon, but adding a whole new month every couple years to make sure their seasons never slip. There are a lot of these, but since we've already heard from a pope and a caliph, let's stay on theme and pull up the Hebrew calendar. In an ordinary year, this calendar will have 12 lunar months, of 29 or 30 days, totaling 354. Like the lunar calendar, that's 11 days short, but this one was designed specifically to keep Passover in the spring. So instead of having a bonus 11 days of no month land every year, the designers landed on a 19 year cycle into which they stuff seven extra months. This means that unlike the lunar calendar, every month will start at about the same time every year, but not exactly the same time like the solar one. This calendar is allowed to slip through the seasons only about 30 days, and then it's corrected about every three years. This satisfies the condition that Passover has to happen in the spring, while maintaining the advantages of being able to start every month on the same lunar phase. Tragically, all three of these calendars will fall out of sync eventually. The Hijri doesn't even try to keep the seasons constant, the Hebrew calendar loses a couple hours every cycle, and the Gregorian is off by about 26 seconds every year. It's important to remember that no amount of math will really make the physics of our silly solar system make sense on a calendar. I mean, to do that, we'd have to completely change all our measurements, maybe make metric hours, rename every day after a plan, maybe You know, on second thought, let's just stick with what we got. These three seem to be working just fine. 